I um came to LA right after I just had like one of the most viral moments I had in my life. Mm-hmm. And there's a song that people, like, they might not know the full song, but they know, this is my age, this is my sign, this is where I live, yeah. and what I like. Yeah. That was, like, one of the biggest trends in 2020. Yeah, absolutely. And that was uh, what, when I first moved there in October 2021, it was already, like, popping on social media. Wow. And it got to a point where it was just an acoustic video that I did in five minutes. I was like, man, this is so corny. Like, yeah, yeah. it's going to not even, I, I don't even, I'm going to just put it out. Yeah. And it went crazy to the point my brother and I was just like, yo, 70,000 videos made to this song. Let's make this yes. into a record. Yes. You know, we were already in rhythm and making high quality records that some of the A-list artists started to take. Yeah. So we're like, let's put that same formula f- to our, our own music. Mm-hmm. And we did that. And the thing about life is, and you, anybody that's in the music industry, and this is something that needs to change. There's always a moment where they're like, oh, welcome to the industry. Mm -hmm. When you're like, man, I got effed over. This person screwed me over. And instead of you expecting sympathy or empathy from someone, that person's like, huh, taps you on the shoulder. Welcome to the industry, my brother. What's up, what's up, guys? Thank you for tuning in to another episode. I apologize for interrupting really quick. I just wanted to talk to you guys about uh, how much work it's taking us to contribute this incredible uh, content for you guys. Uh, For all you R&B lovers that really enjoy uh, these conversations uh, from legends and new artists and just R&B contributors across the board, we would greatly appreciate if you just hit subscribe, like, and share this content. Um, God bless you, and here's the episode. Oh, can we talk? Can we talk? What's up, what's up? It's your boy Ian Vaughn, the R&B ambassador. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Can We Talk R&B podcast. And um, I have another special guest for you guys. I'm not sure if you guys know who he is, uh, but he's an incredible, incredible singer, songwriter, guitar player. Uh, and I'm just happy to be out here in L.A. once again. And I got my man, Will Giddens. Hey, Pleasure. Thanks for having me, bro. How are you doing? I'm amazing, man. You yeah. know, 2024 has a good start so far. Yeah. So I see you, you dropped a song 2024. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we're going to get into that. So you, um, first of all, where's his accent? Where's this from? So I'm from Trinidad and Tobago originally. Gotcha. And so it's like, even though I've been in America since I was like eight years old. Yeah. Um, I still like you know I would go to school and I had to learn how to speak like an American kid yes. growing up in Nashville, and then um, I would go back home and it's a very Trini yes. environment. So and I have a lot of brothers and sisters, yeah. so it's just like just I'm constantly speaking still Trini and it's watered down. Any any real Trini would be like oh he sounds American, nah. you know. But you know shout out to Trinidad. Nah, it's cool man. To me it's always dope. You know I'm a I consider myself to be somewhat of a globalist in terms of just always appreciating other cultures. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously in the islands, uh, you don't want to hear me do my, my Trinidad accent. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not very good. That's funny. <laughs> it's not good, but that's, that's, that's what's up, man. So you are, like, we just want to introduce you to the world, man. Okay. I know you, first of all, we met at uh, Tone Stiff's album listening party. Album Shout release out party, Tone. Actually. Shout out to Tone. Yeah. And uh, this was back last fall. Mm -hmm. And I saw you, and I'm like, to myself, I'm like, I feel like I know this guy from somewhere. I couldn't place where. And then you recognized me. And I was like, I feel like I know you from somewhere. We did the same reaction to each other. Absolutely. So I'm like, next thing you know, I'm like, oh, man. This time I'm like, this is the guy from from social media. Mm -hmm. Killing. Appreciate that, And, you know, I'm a guitar player myself, but I'm like, I watch you, you know, make these videos, singing, doing your thing, like, what got you into like R and B music, and you know, just in terms of what what it is that you're doing? That's a great question. You know, um, even before moving to America, like my father, shout out to my dad, still in getting mm-hmm. uh, a huge influence in the music scene in Trinidad. But my dad, even though Trinidad is known for soca music only and just calypso and other like island type vibes, reggae. Yeah. My dad, excuse me. <clears throat> My dad wanted to introduce my brother and I to R&B mm-hmm. and to rock and soft rock and just music in general that was way bigger or way more vast and versatile than just the so, box that where I come from, you yeah. know? 
And I think that was the beginning of the journey into discovering R&B, you know, and realizing that I have a preference for mid to later 90s R&B and then early 2000s, which is, I think, my favorite, you okay. know. Okay. And, you know, it's just the journey of just, you know, when you're young, you're so impressionable. So it's just yeah. like you have to have people in your life that's like, hey, check this out, you know. Mm -hmm. And so my dad definitely created this amazing environment for music. So I was able to be like a sponge and and take in these different styles of music and just I just happen to to like R and B more than a lot of the other genres, you know? Absolutely. Well R and B is the best genre. You actually. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So coming from Trinidad, like take take me on the journey. You can coming to the States from Trinidad. Yeah. I think I heard you say you grew up in Nashville. Yeah. Nashville, Music City. Exactly. You know I, mean? I spent a lot of time in Nashville. Oh, um, that's what's up. Late 07 to 2011, I was working doing uh, music, uh, EMI gospel oh, out there. That's what's up. Production, producing and songwriting and as an artist, putting my own music out mm -hmm. at that time. So I know it's a lot of incredible, and a lot, it's known for country music, but it's a lot of music from a number of genres going on exactly. in Nashville. So tell me about that transition from Trinidad to Nashville. Well, of course, it was a culture shock, you know, being from the islands and then going to super country nashville tennessee yeah you know <laughs> and so it's like uh the, just culture and in, gen in general with how you s how they speak you know saying finna and fixinna mm -hmm. and all the other country kind yeah. of terms that they're they're known for yeah it just was a a bridge of trying to just understand the american culture in general because yeah. our culture and what we have value what we hold valuable yeah is different you know sure we find contentment in a lot uh, less than what Americans think is, is poverty. And it's yeah. just like, what uh, was poverty here in America is like still just, you know, no, I wouldn't say poverty, but just like someone living in, like uh, making a certain amount to yeah. a tax bracket, you yeah. know, they've been like, oh, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. It's like, that's comfortable living in like, you know? Yeah. And so the, the change of, of just, you know, just adjusting to people, and learning people, you know, it's it's a, it's it's different vibrations, bro. Yeah, for and sure. And you can't explain it until you're someone that's from America and you go to the islands and realize, dang, they so laid back, they so this, this, and that. And it's like, we don't have no other way to be. And people in America, they're so fast-paced and this and that. But if you live in New York City, you have to yeah. be fast-paced. Otherwise, you get left in the dust. You know? is, is there some? Is there a, a, a community, like a Trinidad and Tobago community in Nashville? Um, it's not as vast. I think it's grown a lot since I was a young boy. Um, since I was a young warthog. <laughs> hey, shout out to anybody that knows that. I know but, that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Trinity community isn't that big in Nashville. It's more common. Miami, of course. Yep. Canada or mm -hmm. Toronto, especially. Mm -hmm. And New York is yep. like <clears throat> usually where people go. So Nashville is just so random for people mm. they're like dang how you end up there you know yeah that's what i'm asking because i'm like i know like a lot of um obviously this is a different place but like mm -hmm. a lot of jamaicans they moved to canada uh, you have a lot of haitians in, in florida they're in louisiana they're mm -hmm. in all different places around the country yeah and i just i personally hadn't uh heard of a i guess a trinity community in nashville in yeah nashville. no i don't and blame I you. that's a major culture shock because nashville is a, Bro, a unique place yeah and it's like it's still very like you said even from the music side it's still very country mm -hmm. And I remember when I finished college and I moved back there, a lot of people was like, man, stay here and just like develop um, your, yourself and not develop, establish yourself here so that you could be one of the upcoming like artists that brings R&B or brings these different styles in. I'm like, I was never one of those like, oh, I'm going to just be here for t 10, 20 years and take on that mantle of armor. It's just like, nah, y'all could kick rocks. I'm going gotcha. to go yeah. to L.A. and turn up. I'm <laughs> so what, so, what, what, so the transition from Nashville to L.A., like when that happened, how that happened? Man, so it, was, it wasn't it was just a, from uh, Nashville to L.A. So here's the thing. I used to be an athlete, too. Okay. So a lot of people don't know that I was uh, playing basketball, track, football. Mm -hmm. And so... Unfortunately, my mom and my dad uh, didn't understand. I have four sisters and two brothers, okay. right? Big so, family. Yeah, and we're all, like, very, very close and very talented individuals, yeah. you know? And my parents didn't know, hey, if we put a little thousands of dollars here and there for my son's 
uh, summer league sports yeah. and yeah. putting them in this, this and that. Like, we were beasts. My brother and I were both like brother. My brother's my height. And we both do music together. Nice. And but I don't even want to go too in depth with that because I'm a big believer in and and God one and two is just like everything being in His like his order timing. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so if my parents would have put that type of um, attentiveness into our sports and extracurricular sports and stuff. Like they would have, we would have ended up doing sports, you know. Yeah. And I feel like I was put on this earth to do music, yeah. so God made it in a way that certain things happen in my life that maybe be like, dang, I can't do this no more. Yeah. So what? What else should I do? You know. I understand and, that. I mean, I'm a, obviously we're close to the same height. Uh, I played basketball as well. Um, I didn't. Play, I didn't run track or play football. But mm -hmm. growing up, I made a choice. It was like, ah, do I don't want to focus on sports or do I don't want to focus on music? And music, I, that bug caught me. So exactly. I think I was like 16 when I was like, when I, I giving to, up the hoop dream. Yeah, I went to London, uh, uh, singing over there, mm -hmm. and from Louisiana, we went on, went on a tour. And at that point, I'm like, man, I'm gonna do music. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I, I, I was still playing basketball, but I didn't, I wasn't playing with intention anymore. Exactly. You know I mean? So I get yeah. it. I understand that. So, all right, moving forward. So you get to LA. And you're pursuing this music career. Mm -hmm. So tell me about how you coming to LA and what you've been doing and how you've gotten to where you've gotten. <clears throat> so funny you story, I um came to LA right after I just had like one of the most viral moments I had in my life. Mm -hmm. And there's a song that people like they might not know the full song, but they know this is my age, this is my sign. This is where I live yeah. and what I like. Yeah. That was like one of the biggest trends in 2020. Yeah, absolutely. And that was uh, what, when I first moved there in October 2021, it was already like popping on social media wow. and it got to a point where it was just an acoustic video that I did in five minutes. I was like, man, this is so corny. Like yeah, yeah. it's going to not even, I, I don't even, I'm going to just put it out. Yeah. And it went crazy to the point. My brother and I were just like, yo, 70,000 videos made to this song. Let's make this yes. into a record. Yes. You know, we were already in rhythm and making high quality records that some of the A list artists started to take. Yeah. So we're like, let's put that same formula f to our, our own music. Mm -hmm. And we did that. And the thing about life is, and you, anybody that's in the music industry, and this is something that needs to change, there's always a moment where they're like, oh, welcome to the industry. Mm -hmm. When you're like, man, I got effed over. This person screwed me over. Yeah. And instead of you expecting sympathy or empathy from someone, that person's like, huh, taps you on the shoulder. Welcome to the industry, my brother. Right. And you're like, why is that the 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 norm? Why is that the culture? Mm -hmm. You know, and <clears throat> so when I was here in 2020, and I feel like every year it has those kind of things where do like you would try something and you would trust something or trust someone and then it just doesn't work out mm -hmm. because not everyone is built on integrity and as they say no standing on business That's you right. know but if you are someone i feel like trust is what makes us the most human like that's the most human characteristic that we have is that I meet you and I trust you're not going to just hit me across my face right. that you have whatever your parents taught Mutual you or respect. you know what i'm saying yeah. and so i feel like if you can't have that and someone people are like don't trust no one this and that if you don't have, don't have trust you're not having a human experience right. so for me my discernment with meeting people and being like you know what I see something and this person would, would, would lie on me I, I feel like this person will steal from me and this and that mm -hmm. when you get the older you get the more that you're like hey I already tried that with this last situation and this person is giving these type of same vibes and I'm not gonna go down that road but Honestly speaking, the more levels you reach, the more you continue to trust people. And there's new things that open up where you're like, dang, you, you really went out your way to do that, That's man? Right. It's like, And so I think that it's something that sometimes when this stuff happens, it's very hurtful, you know? I feel like men in, generally, in, in, men in general, like we are not allowed or have created a safe space to express when something hurts us like that. Yeah. So, but it's that just like, if, if someone, if I, someone, Hey, I'm paying you $10,000 to, 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 um, run a marketing campaign on my song. And then I pay you that and you bring me no type of value. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That there should be a bone in you. That's like, Hey man, you paid me this. I know I didn't give you the work, but let me go above and beyond to give you the rest of that value. Absolutely. Instead of being like, well, I did my part. You need to I, like, go go take that to the lord in prayer you right. know what i'm saying yeah yeah and that's that's <clears throat> unfortunately it's a lot of wolves out here oh you know what i'm saying so yeah. i mean obviously all over the world but specifically twilight uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah for sure so 
it's more takers than they are givers. Mm -hmm. So you you know as an artist and you're being vulnerable and you like you your heart's on the sleeve. You're making these records. You're doing your thing, and you're like, man, I just want to somebody. Hey, I can help you do this. I can help you do that. You mm -hmm. invest that money. So it's always important to have people that you do trust, mm -hmm. and then be you know be a little less quick to just. To just, just doing things do without having and, and some consult, consultant consult, or, yeah. be a little patient and if it's the right opportunity using that discernment like you said yeah. you know the right opportunities will come in that way and a lot of the times it's like in the music industry if something songs too good to be true it you is. know they say that in life but yeah. it's just like just it's under the what gets you is that for me you would think that based on how hard I've worked yeah. that I know that there's certain things that I deserve. Yeah. So that's what tricks me. And like, that's why even something like as recent as last year, I went through something where I'm like, dang, I thought that I deserve this next level. Mm. So this person come and saying they're doing that. Then I'm like, oh, okay, it makes sense. But it's still that kind of, it's too good to be true, but I deserve this and this is my time. So don't. And that is, I, can't, I guess, so another level of just learning of like, yeah, you can't just like be like, oh, well, it makes sense. You know, you still have to be able to either have the sense to not go into situations that is not healthy for you or have people in your life that could consult that. But a lot of the people that that uh, that you would look to that get that insight from, you already know a lot more information about the industry than they do because mm -hmm. you've been trying and doing a lot of things. So for me, what's unfortunate is that if I go to some of my OGs about certain things, the, the, the industry's changed so much since then. That's right. So like what you knew at like the back of your hand in the 90s and the early 2000s and early two, two, 2020s, it's, it's a, different a whole game. different ball game, man. And they yeah. right now are trying to keep up with this new streaming world and this, this and that. And it's just like, I am very knowledgeable on that. That's, so, that's <coughs> interesting you brought that, not to cut you off, that Go you ahead. brought that up. As a independent artist, mm -hmm. um, and you're making, you know, you have like a huge following on social media. So you, Thanks, you know, man. I think you're like eight hundred thousand or so on Instagram. You're well, I'm almost to a million. Almost to a million on yeah. Instagram, and you, you know, it seems like on, across all the platforms, you're close to four, three to four million followers. Okay. How did you do that? Like that's, you know, tell me what that. I know you do a lot of cover songs, mm -hmm. um, and you sound incredible. So you know, first of Thanks, all, bro. like when I first saw you, I'm like. Man, you actually have a pure voice, skillful voice. I appreciate that. You know, you know I, mean? I feel like sometimes I'm not seen, but nah, but man. the ones that get me, nah, man. they get you're, me. You're a, you're a real musician, a real singer, and you're doing Bless. the things. You're hitting the notes as a person who actually understands what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, you know what I mean? Like, you make me want to pick my guitar up and go go in the share room. That's you know how you know saying? it's real, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm inspired by that, too. I go online yeah. and someone sings and they play guitar. I'm like, woo that was cold and yeah. I follow them yeah. you know and I'm like I support that because I'm inspired by you Absolutely. I watched your video and it made me go pick up my guitar literally Absolutely. and write the song because I'm so inspired and I that's think right. that's beautiful man that's life bro Absolutely. you know I mean I think that's a, a <coughs> part of why you've amassed such a following that you have so how would you I mean what was your formula for that okay yeah man I'm one of those like I'm not trying to hold back no information you know it, yeah. social media works differently for everyone you know yeah. I could try something and then you try the same thing that I did and it That's don't right. work for you That's or right. vice versa. That's right. But um, my formula was literally simply just going on this. I started with Vine. I don't know if you remember I Vine. Remember Vine. <laughs> and Vine, um, it was just like, yo. And what's funny is like I had a, my, my ego wouldn't let me do Vine in my pride because <laughs> it was like six seconds. And I was like, six seconds? Like... That, well, how dare you I can't, uh, I can't make get an lick out in six seconds. I, I was like, how dare you try to bottle my talent with yeah, six yeah. seconds? And that was <laughs> verbatim like what I was saying. My sister was like, yo, you should try it. Like people are getting signed, people are blowing up. Like I think you're just as good if better than a lot of these people on here. Yeah. So then I remember funny quick story. I went on the voice mm. and it didn't work out. Yeah. So they didn't turn chairs for me. And I was like, I'm I'm oh, never so you were actually on the show. Well, it's almost as it didn't exist because they didn't air my episode. Gotcha. But, like I said, man, the God I still be looking out, That's you know? Right. And so at the time, that hurt. At the time, I was heartbroken because I was like, dang, man, this was my time to shine. Like, America and everyone's going to become fans of me and my voice. But I had no following at the time. No one really knew who I was. Yeah. And it wasn't the right time. And I still had a lot of developing to do because I was 23 years old, man. Yeah. I was a little pup. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so uh, I didn't make it on there. And then that's what made me, gave me the kind of chip on my shoulder to be like, yo, let me go and really just try 
to pop off on social media since this is the new big thing. Mm-hmm. Man, so I hit the ground running, and it just, it just, I, the more I did it, it just one video popped off, and then I kept feeding. It's like, it's like, it's a, a, a animal oh, that yeah. is, it has to eat every day. That's right. And so I used to just crank out videos, go help my mom at work and stuff, and come home and do it over and over again to the point where I amassed millions of followers. The and crazy part is you have more traction mm-hmm. than a lot of artists that are signed to major labels yeah you know what i glad that you say that yeah. i'm starting to i feel like uh, if i were to just go on my social media and say a lot of the things that i how i feel about mm-hmm. how these companies move and how the the state of the industry is mm-hmm. people would be with would, would not like everything that i had to say and i'm not I'm really big on putting my just my talent out there you're not trying but to be I'm, contentious yeah, yeah and i'm glad that you just said that bro because it's like i I believe that in myself and mm-hmm. I think that when I put out because if it's a numbers game and if it's a talent game and, and you you find an artist that has all that and more you room. know you then you would be like then what's the what's the hold up but you know for me it's just like it's it's kind of weird because I want to be someone that encourages people to be like yo all you got to do is this and then you could get a deal you could get this, this and that but Right now, like my brother and I, with based on just my music, we make six figures independently. That's fantastic. With no, thank you, man. Without any label, without any, without any, we barely even use on marketing to market our own songs, and like platforms like with ads and stuff like that. I started to do that with like YouTube and a couple other things, but it's just all org- organic. And that's a blessing. Yeah. I was gonna ask you like. As an indie artist, I know it can get tough, you know, as you know, obviously I'm, I'm assuming that you're doing, you're performing as well. Um, not as much. Not and as much. that's something this year that is going to be, because that, like I was saying, the, we've focused on the, the streaming yeah. and what's crazy is streaming is the least, like it's a payout and that is poo poo caca. <laughs> like it is abysmal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like point se- point zero zero three nine seven cents on Spotify That's right. per like per stream. Per so stream. like a million yeah. streams is barely four thousand dollars. That's right. You know, and so unless you are massing millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions and of streams, yeah, yeah, unless you get that, it's just like, and then you have to be the person that creates your stuff so that you and whoever makes it, y'all could break bread that That's way. Right. And so that's kind of what forced me to not only be the artist, it forced me to be the songwriter, mm. be part of the production, be the the social media strategist, the mm. the market the the marketing yeah. um, specialist, yes. and and literally just f- if I do a show, I don't have a team of people right now that because I if I'm like okay I'm doing a show in 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 Sacramento. Mm. I go through my followers and I try to find people that I know that's in the Sacramento area. And then I go make a post that I know is intentionally going to pop off. Yeah. And that instead of putting the title of the cover or something, I'll be like, hey, I'm coming to your city. Like, DM me for tickets. Mm. Because the other thing is you have to spoon feed things to people. That's right. And so even though someone like you, you're like, yo, I, I'm a fan of Will. Like, if yeah. he comes to my city, I'm going to go to that show. Yeah. You would think that it would be like that oh, no, yeah. with the the super talented ones. And it it is like that, but it still has to, if you want to, if it's a 300 to 500 capacity spot, you might be able to sell 150 tickets without having to move a muscle mm-hmm. independently. That's right. But you're going to have to go and, and engage with these people. Hey, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Yeah. This, this, and that. And give them that personal experience so that they feel, oh, I have to be here because he's expecting me. Come on. And that right there is something that I am still going to do until it gets to the point where I can't do it no more. Mm. And I love, I, I love your heart behind that. Thanks, yeah, I, I think about, <laughs> um, well, as an independent artist, and you mentioned mm-hmm. the game has changed significantly. Um, I'm an independent artist. I remember how things were in the late '90s. Mm-hmm. I remember things how things were in the 2000s. Mm-hmm. I remember how things were in the 2010s up into 2000, uh, the earlier parts of the teens. Excuse me. And now, um, in the each decade and and some time in between, there's been different little little things that's changed in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, that you have to adjust to the new way of doing things. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to you, and this is good information for the audience that, you yeah. know, a lot of up-and-coming artists that uh, are trying to do it. A lot of major labels are struggling to make it work for R&B artists. 
and you're finding a way to do this and you know you're saying you're not even on the road that much so Mm -mm. you're make you're able to have a six-figure uh income just from understanding the digital marketplace yes that's that's fantastic yeah and so thank you man i appreciate that and so the next level for me is hey man hopefully aligning with people that see my vision so yeah yeah, this is the other thing that gets people caught up like uh, labels aren't bad all a label is 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 a bank yeah. You know, and they're like, hey, if I give you a half a million dollars, I need to see that half a mil, big fella. Right. That At least that I have to see that back. You know, a lot of the times people get those deals and they're like, oh, this is the most money I ever seen. They stopped. They stopped working. They stopped putting music. They go in and party and they go in and buy certain things. They it's out of their means. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that gets them caught up. And then it's like, oh, dang, man, this label screw me over this and that. You know, I'm sure that the labels do screw people over. But. Did you go into that situation with leverage mm. or did you just pop off and you had like two to five songs to your name mm. and now they, you blew up because you had the biggest song on TikTok, but you, you suck, mm. you know? And I'm not just saying that Ooh. just like you, you're actually, you got, it was a mistake, you know, you yeah. were, it, and I want to call it a mistake. That might have been their time. But you're not working hard enough. <clears throat> but I don't want to take the elevator, bro. Yeah. I got to build these leg muscles taking the stairs, bro. And yeah. that's what my brother and I did. That's what a lot of people, and if they hear my voice and they hear this, it's going to be biblical to them. Like, dang, this dude gets me, wow. you know, because there's a lot of us that are really gifted in music and we're the ones that direct like you could tell certain people that's like man god literally yeah did a little razzle dazzle on their voice when they were born as a little baby and talent you know not yeah. just music like yeah. you can't tell like, like somebody like lebron james from a young age you're like dang he's supposed to play this sport no like you know what i'm saying and other people that have those gifts but a lot of the times music is the only thing where if i go up to if i go and i play basketball and i put up 50 points in a game it doesn't matter if i have one arm or not scouts are going to hear about that and they're going to be scouts in my next game music is the only thing where if it's a if a numbers game bro i'm putting up a hundred every game bro Mm. i am i am i am a a dog when it comes to this music stuff i'm a very friendly person but i'm a robot bro and it's i'm not doing this for even my own um gratification and stuff it's just like the things that inspire me like my family and trying to like my where my both my parents come from is poverty mm-hmm. and they did an amazing job being intentional and in raising me and my brothers and sisters mm-hmm. and so me as a young man seeing my mom work um cleaning houses while she's pregnant with my little sister mm-hmm. my baby sister and seeing her walk up these stairs and being tired is like those images is burning my mind so wow. every time i feel like giving up i think about that I think about the fact that my dad and my mom was working nine to like waking up at 6 a.m. and then working till like 8 p.m., <clears throat> then going to um, Bridgestone Arena, you know, yeah. in Nashville. Yeah. To work till like midnight, 1 a.m., to put uh, extra money for, for our school and other things. And it's like, I can't forget that. Yeah. And when I work as hard as I am, people be like, dang, bro, you doing all these stuff, this and that. I can't not do that. You have a, you know? t- you have a totally different. Yeah, family. bro. That's I got. Crazy. I'm trying to retire my parents, man. I'm trying yeah. to provide for my family, and I'm trying to change the meaning of my last name. And I feel like I. It's not just me. It's my siblings. We all have a duty to to honor that and to to continue to be the best versions of ourselves, man. And that's who I am. Man, that's you awesome. Know? Do you sure. um, do you think going viral? Mm-hmm. I guess is that like to, uh, on social across the board? Do you think that is sustainable in terms of That's for your career? Question. That's a, actually a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, to answer your question, yes, but it has to be like not just one viral. It has to be a continuation of viral. Mm-hmm. And when you are independent, you, you have moments where it's just like more than others, yeah. but you have to be it's been this 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 market is oversaturated right now yes. so you have to develop something that sets you apart mm-hmm. you know <clears throat> for me even aside from just like my aesthetic you know i know i'm a, a decent looking guy yep, yep. but when i went to my page like i've if you look at from the evolution of my my stuff you would see that i've made just just changes in the aesthetics just to to core to to core to, how to go how to say it to match 
like where the the climate of social media gotcha. so for instance like i never used to in the past i didn't ha- own no plans so me and my brother was kicking in to our bachelor pad mm-hmm. and so we got a, a house now and our little sister's there and she has a nice room she put plants it's very feminine mm-hmm. people don't even know i shoot most of them videos <laughs> in <laughs> my sister's room, room man because my dusty ass room bro that was like <laughs> but my sister's room is really nice and i'm like oh i go sing a really nice song i make sure i go and edge my face my face up yeah 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 you know, and I and I go and I wear certain colors that I realize, oh, they like when I wear this blue shirt. It goes viral every time. Mm. I am that, like, detail. Yeah, and I think a lot of the times people want to have the success and they want to have viral moments and stuff, but they don't realize if something goes viral, instead of you rejoicing, or you should rejoice in it because mm-hmm. it's very uncommon to just even have that. But study the the viral the virality of it. Mm-hmm. Like, why did you go viral? How did you go viral? And once you do that, then you become viral, just yeah. in your essence in general. Absolutely. And so, not everything that I do is viral, but a lot of the stuff that I do goes crazy, and it's because yeah. I figured out my science. I didn't figure out the science. I figured right. out my Yours. science. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've listened to some of your um, your independent your albums, like your your your. I'm saying independent, but you're actually original music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have some really good stuff, bro. Appreciate that, man. Like, so, like, I haven't heard the record that's like, okay, whoa, this is crazy. I'm mm-hmm. obviously all of it's good. I haven't mm-hmm. heard the hit yet, mm-hmm. but you're one hit away from really being like, okay, where, where, oh, this, this, guy, where this guy come from? Yeah, no, and I appreciate the, that that transparency. Like, yeah. I, you know, I'm not expecting everyone to be like bro every song you have is a hit because you do music you're yeah, gonna you be understand. like you're gonna like you're gonna be keep it a buck you're like hey right. i heard all of it is fire but i haven't heard this one that i'm like yo this is the undeniable to you that's but right. that's the thing sometimes people will be like yo this joint is the one this joint is the one boom boom boom. for me the beauty <laughs> in being independent is the fact that i could try no i question. could always try and put music out there and things that i feel confident about i don't make songs that it's like this is the hit this is the one right. i make songs that make me feel good and give well, me and, and the, the fact of the matter is mm-hmm. there is not a song that i've heard from you that is not good so that's the bottom line so you you know you as artists we're always trying to obviously make something that, that resonates with us mm-hmm. and obviously you're building an audience because uh, i've said i've been saying this this is tribe culture so now you cr- you're creating your tribe yeah and the songs that you make are resonating with an audience and that audience is going to be all over the world. Mm-hmm. And you look up, you already have 4 million followers. You're going to look up one day, you got 40 million followers. Yeah. And and it's going to compound on top of that. Yeah. It's one song that I, I really, really that. liked for from you called Say the Word. Hey. On that last, uh, on that last Gemini. Um, Gemini album. Mm-hmm. Take me on a deep dive of that album, of that, of that particular song. Like, what were you, what were you going through when you wrote that song? Because that record, I was like, out of all of them, that's that one right there that, got some got some smack on it. Bro, appreciate that. Yeah, man, you have some amazing questions, by the way. But thank you. Man. Uh, so this one particularly, that I've never been able to tell this story. Okay. But say the word, it wasn't a song that was meant to be for me. Okay. Say the word was. We were in rhythm. It was it was quarantine, so it's twenty twenty. Yeah. And that year, I wrote probably, I think probably three hundred and fifty songs, <laughs> and I recorded hold my on, hold on, hold on. what. He wrote it's three hundred and sixty five days in the year. Yeah. He wrote three hundred and fifty songs. Yeah, on average. Like if at least every single day I wrote I wrote a song that So yeah. did you write a verse, a hook, and a bridge? I mean like or like or you just wrote like the hook? Or um wrote- so a lot of them were like of course it commonly is like verse and a hook. And then you just leave verse two open and you fly the pre and then it comes back around. Got you, got you. Most of them were that, but a lot of them were full songs. Yeah. Because I, I, I ask that question that way because yeah. when I write songs, yeah. I, if I wrote the hook, I wrote a song. Oh. I know I can come, I know the verses. Oh, yeah. Come. If that's the case, then it's a, it's a lot more than that. I got you. Know? you. That's but, crazy. That's but, just for me. That's for my own No, mind. yeah. And I feel what you're talking about. But yeah. for me, it's just like, that, songs yeah, so it was it was it was COVID, bro. I'm like, I honestly was like, yo, if the world gonna end, I'm about to go crazy. Wow, I'm about to be the. I don't know if I, it was just me, but I was like, yo, the playing field is leveled right now. Like everybody's in the crib, no one's super anymore. So even if you Pharrell or you or yeah, you yeah, freaking yeah. Neo, you in the crib, bro. That's right. And if we both in the crib, I'm gonna outwork you because you in the you, in the, you got you chilling. Yeah. You already who you are. I'm still like hungry. Yeah. And so I went in and I did that song. 
that was pitched to Chris Brown and it was pitched to Tank mm. and them. You know, that was the only two R&B artists that I could get the song to at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I recorded it, I was like, yo, this is very sensual. This is a vibe, yo. And then it got to the point where both um, Chris and Tank passed on the song. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yo, I right. sang this joint. I'm going to put right. this out. Yeah. And shout out to my bro, AJ. He wrote the song with me. And like most of those songs that year, me and him was in rhythm. That's like one of my favorite like co-writers, like yeah. incredible writer and vocalist. Yeah. And produced by my big brother, JR. And the guitars you hear is, is me. Yeah. But my brother produced it. And That's yeah. a fantastic song. Thank you so much, bro. Fantastic song. Let me ask you this. Um, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? 10? Dang, we couldn't even do two. You can do what? five. Uh, do <laughs> but I, I think, I, I say 10 because I'm thinking long term. Oh, okay. Because a lot of artists have, you know, you have a one or two year stint. Mm hmm and then you know they fall off and i'm saying fall off they just lose their passion and lose the whatever for whatever reason okay so i'm saying 10 years because you know you're on a roll right now and i feel like you're going up you're not on the way down like you're literally on the way up and yeah. you, you ain't nowhere near hit your your peak, peak so. yeah Hi, i wrote a song called peak nice it's actually it's actually similar vibes to say the way it's fire nice i'll play it for you after okay, okay. <laughs> but um yeah, bro. Uh, dang, what was the the, the essence? Like, oh yeah, ten years. So for me, I see myself being multi multi award winning gra Grammys, Billboard awards, mm -hmm. uh, MTV, VH1, whatever awards there is. I see myself winning a lot of them. I see myself having a lot of number one records in the world. Yes. I see myself having gold and platinum records that amass from not only my artistry but the the me writing for others. Yeah. You know, and I see myself uh, being married with probably hopefully a couple of kids at that okay, point, okay, 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I hope that at that point, uh, the same kind of thing I experienced growing up with my family, but the difference is like we grew up with that family love, but we yeah. didn't have the financial stability. Yeah. So I just look forward to just being able to be, see my kids grow around their aunts and uncles and cousins and the same thing that I experienced at that time. I would want that in my life, you know. Gotcha. After I have had the success and touring and stuff like that, I'll still probably tour. But it's just like yeah, yeah. that's that right there is what life is about. Like Absolutely. being an artist is cool, but I'm trying to 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 continue my legacy and and not only with my own family. A big thing is I want to be a person that helps change the industry. Yeah, I think the industry is sick right now, and this reason why is because they have A and Rs that are not going to have the type of internal like meter mm. with, for them to even see an artist like a Will Gittins and mm. be like, if you are A&R and &R, you not like, like doing like this for, for my stuff, <laughs> then it's, then the market is, is, is Jack, wow. you know? And so that, and I don't want that to come off as cocky. I'm just, I'm intentional as you can see in this yeah, yeah. with everything with, with numbers and stuff. So if I'm doing this and I'm already making this sort of money, what happens if you put a, just a, even a small machine, get the mm -hmm. same kind of push you would give uh, A minus or B list artist? Mm -hmm. I'll I'll you dust the whole killed. game, you know. Yeah. And so, let alone if they gave me the same machine they gave those A listers, it's yeah, a wrap, yeah. you know. Well, look, man, but, you you keep you keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you're ultimately, uh, like I said, you're making more noise than a lot of guys who are on major labels. Thank From a you, talent man. standpoint, you are a, you are a talent. So whether it's a list artist, you are a talent artist. Uh, I appreciate yeah, that, man. Incredible. Love. You know, you got a good look, you got a great sound, mm -hmm. and obviously the people love it because that's why they follow you. Thanks, so, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, this is a look a, a ongoing conversation. I wish we had a lot more time, but mm -hmm. I do appreciate you coming out, man. Of well, course, man. I'll person. come back. Uh, you yeah, know? for sure. No, for sure, for sure. For sure. Look, thank you guys. It's a continued conversation. Uh, can we talk R&B? Will Giddens in the building. Can we talk? Oh, can we talk? Can we talk? R&B. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, go to our Patreon for bonus content.